Chapters 13 through 18 of the Second Book of Samuel from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Farrar Fenton. The Second Book of Samuel, Chapters 13 through 18. Chapter 13. These events followed. Absalom the son of David had a beautiful cousin whose name was Tamar, and Amnon the son of David loved her. And Amnon grieved until he made himself ill because of Tamar his cousin, for she was a maiden. But it was difficult in the opinion of Amnon to acquire her in any way. Amnon, however, had a friend named Jonadab the son of Shemaiah the brother of David. This Jonadab was a very crafty man, so he asked him, why now are you like this a king's son downhearted morning after morning why not tell me so amnon said to him it is about tamar the cousin of absalom whom i love jonadab however replied lie on your bed and sham sickness when your father will come to see you then say to him will you send tamar my cousin and let her make cakes before my eyes so that i may see it and I will eat from her hand. <laughs> Amnon consequently lay down as if sick, and the king came to see him, when Amnon said to him, I wish you to send Tamar my cousin and let her prepare food and, <coughs> and do the cooking before my sight, so that I may see it, <coughs> and I will eat after her hand. <coughs> David therefore sent to Tamar at her house to say, Come to the house of Amnon your cousin and make him cakes. Tamar, therefore, went to the house of Amnon, her cousin, and he was lying down. Then she took the dough and kneaded it, and made pancakes, and baked the cakes, and took the fry-pan and the dough to him, but he refused to eat. Suddenly Amnon exclaimed, Let everyone go out from me. They all went out from him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, <coughs> Bring me the cakes to the chamber, <coughs> and I will eat them from your hand. So Tamar took the pancakes which she had made, and brought them to Amnon her cousin in the chamber, and she offered him the food. But he seized her and said, Come to me, lie with me, my cousin. But she replied, No, my cousin, I will not, for such a thing should not be done in Israel. Do not commit such a crime as that, and would you expose me to scorn, and expose yourself as one of the blackguards in Israel? But you, speak, I pray, to the king, for he would not refuse me to you. But he would not listen to her, and being stronger than her, he overpowered and violated her. Then Amnon hated her with a very great hatred, for the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the lust with which he had lusted for her. And Amnon said to her, Get up, be off. But she replied to him, Do not add to this great wrong that you have done to me by driving me out. He would not, however, listen to her, but called to an attendant who waited upon him and said, Drive this woman out at once from me into the street, and lock the door after her. Now she wore a long-sleeved robe, such as the daughters of the king wore, with a maiden's cloak. Yet his valet sent her out into the street, and locked the door after her. Then Tamar threw dust on her head, and tore the long-sleeved robe she wore, and spread her hands over her face, and went weeping. But Absalom, her cousin, asked her, Has Amnon your cousin been with you? However, at present keep silent, my cousin, for he is your relative. Do not lay this matter to your heart. Consequently Tamar was quiet and secluded herself in the house of Absalom, her cousin. When King David heard the whole of these things, he was very angry. Absalom, however, said nothing for bad or good to Amnon about the wrong he had done to his cousin Tamar. But when two years had passed and they were shearing for Absalom at bel Khazar, which is in Ephraim, Absalom invited all the sons of the king. Absalom also went to the king and said, There is a shearing feast with your servant. Will the king and his ministers come to your servant? But the king answered Absalom, No, my boy, all of us cannot go now. We will not burden you. Then he pressed him, but he would not go, but thanked him. So Absalom said, If not, let Amnon my brother go with us. And the king asked him, Why should he go with you? But Absalom pressed him till he sent Amnon and all the king's sons with him. Then Absalom instructed his attendants, saying, Watch till you see Amnon's heart merry with wine, and when I say to you, Stab Amnon and kill him, be bold and strong-hearted. 
the attendants of Absalom consequently did to Amnon as Absalom commanded. Then all the sons of the king got up and mounted each on his mule and fled. But while they were on the road, a report reached David, saying, Absalom has stabbed all the king's sons, and not one of them is left. Then the king arose and tore his clothes and laid on the ground, and all his ministers stood tearing their clothing. But Jonadab, the son of Shemaiah, the brother of David, interposed and said, Do not let my prince think that all the young princes have been killed, for Amnon only has been killed. For that has been determined by Absalom from the day he ravished his cousin Tamar. So now let not the king lay this matter on his heart, thinking all the sons of the king are killed. For except Amnon none have been killed, and Absalom has fled. Then the man on the lookout raised his eyes and looked, and saw a great crowd of people coming along from the further road at the side of the hill. Jonadab consequently said to the king, See, the princes are coming as your servant said, these are they. And by the time he had ceased speaking, the king's sons arrived and lifted up their voices and wept. And the king and all his ministers also wept, a very great weeping. And he mourned over his son all the year. Absalom, however, had fled and went to Talmai ben Amikor, king of Geshur. Thus Absalom fled and went to Geshur and was there three years. King David, however, longed for Absalom after he was consoled for the death of Amnon. Chapter 14 And Joab ben Zeruiah knew that the heart of the king was upon Absalom. So Joab sent to Tikua and brought a clever woman from there and said to her, I want you to disarrange yourself and clothe yourself in widow's weeds and not to tidy yourself with oil, but seem like a woman distressed for a long time over death. Then go to the king to speak to him this speech. Then Joab put the words into her mouth. The woman of Tikua accordingly appealed to the king and fell on her face to the earth and lay there and exclaimed, Save me, king! Consequently the king asked her, What is your affair? And she answered, I am a desolate widow woman whose husband died, but your servant had two sons who fought in the field when there was no separator between them, and the one struck the other and killed him. So all the clan arose against your servant and said, Give up the murderer of his brother, and we will kill him for the life of his brother whom he has murdered. Thus the property will be desolated, and my heir will be destroyed, and the only coal left to me to continue my husband's name will be extinguished on the ground. But the king said to the woman, Go to your home, and I will give orders about you. Then the Tikoan woman answered the king, Let the fault fall upon me, your majesty, and on the house of my fathers, and let the king and his throne be innocent. So the king replied, Whoever threatens you, bring him to me, and he shall never again injure you. However, she said, king remember your ever-living god mighty redeemer of bloodshed and let them not destroy my son when he replied by the life of the ever-living not a hair of your son shall fall to the ground but the woman repeated let your handmaid now speak a word to his majesty the king and he said speak to me when the woman continued but why have you thought like this about the people of god why has the king spoken thus when he is in fault by not having brought back his own fugitive? For the dead who has died is like water poured upon the earth which cannot be recovered until God raises the soul, and a thought, when thought is and thrown out, goes from us. So now why I have come to speak with your majesty this speech was because I am afraid of the people. So your servant said, I will speak to the king, my chief. The king will do the thing he says for his handmaid." and the king has listened and will deliver his subject from the hand of the men who would destroy her and her only son from the estate of god your handmaid also said the promise of his majesty the king will be a gift for his majesty is like a messenger of god listening to good and bad so may your ever-living god be with you then he interrupted her and said to the woman do not hide from me i pray what i ask of you and the woman replied speak then your majesty when the king asked is not the hand of joab in all this and the woman answered by the life of your soul your majesty there is not to the right or left of all that has been spoken to your majesty anything but what your servant joab has instructed me 
he put into the mouth of your handmaid all these speeches with the purpose of using my mouth for an object your servant joab made these addresses and my prince is wise with the wisdom of a messenger of god who knows all upon earth the king consequently said to joab since then you have contrived this conversation with me go and bring back the young man absalom so joab bent his face to the earth and bowed and thanked the king then joab said i know to-day that i have found favour in your eyes your majesty because the king has made such a promise to his servant joab accordingly arose and went to geshur and brought absalom to jerusalem but the king commanded let him reside in his own house for he shall not see my face absalom therefore resided in his own house and did not see the face of the king absalom was however the handsomest man in all israel very splendid from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head there was not a defect in him when they cut his hair and it was cut every year he cut it because it was heavy upon him when they cut the hair of his head it was valued at two hundred shekels by the royal standard absalom had three sons and one daughter born to him and her name was tamar she was a woman of great beauty absalom lived in jerusalem two years without seeing the face of the king then absalom sent to joab to introduce him to the king but he would not go to him so he sent a second time but he would not come consequently he said to his servants you see joab's cornfields are alongside mine and he has sown barley go and set it on fire and absalom's servants set it on fire then joab moved and came to absalom's house and asked him why have you ordered your servants to fire my standing crops and absalom answered joab because i sent to you saying come here and i will send you to the king to ask why have i been brought from geshur it would be as well for me to be there yet so now i wish to see the face of the king and if there is a fault in me let me be put to death joab consequently went to the king and informed him and he invited absalom who went to the king and bowed to him with his face earthward to the face of the king and the king was reconciled to absalom chapter fifteen it was after this that absalom procured himself chariots and horses and fifty men to run before him and early in the mornings absalom placed himself at the side of the street of the high court and when any man who had a lawsuit came to the king for a decision absalom would invite him to himself and ask from what village do you come when he would answer your servant is from one of the tribes of israel then absalom would say to him look your case is good and right but there is no one appointed by the king to hear it for you next he would exclaim if i were appointed as a judge in the country and any man came to me who had a wrong i would decide and rectify it for you and when a person approached to bow to him he would stretch out his hand and seize his and salute him and by this means absalom made himself popular to all israel who came for justice to the king thus absalom stole the hearts of the people of israel when four years had passed absalom said to the king i wish to go now and pay in hebron the vows which i vowed to the ever-living for your servant vowed a vow while i resided in geshur in the land of edom saying if the ever-living will restore me to jerusalem i will serve the ever-living so the king replied go in peace he therefore arose and went absalom then sent secret agents to all the tribes of israel to say when you hear the sound of the trumpet then exclaim absalom reigns in hebron there went also two hundred persons from jerusalem with absalom invited guests and honest men who knew nothing about all the affair but absalom had sent for achitophel the gilonite the counsellor of david from the town of gilon for him to sacrifice the sacrifices so there was a powerful conspiracy and the people came and crowded to absalom information however came to david reporting the heart of the people of israel is gone after absalom consequently david said to all his ministers who were with him at jerusalem let us arise and fly for there will be no safety for us before absalom expedite the journey for fear he should hasten and rush and drive on to us with ferocity and assail the city with the sword and the king's ministers answered the king whatever his majesty the king chooses his ministers will do it 
the king and all his family therefore went out on their feet but the king left ten of his slave wives to take care of the palace thus the king with all his forces went out on their feet and halted at beth merkach and all his ministers walked at his side with the guards and couriers and the six hundred gardeners who came on foot from the garden marched along before the face of the king but the king said to atai the gardener why do you especially go with us return and settle with that king for you are a foreigner so why not return to your own home formerly you came and to-day you are a wanderer with us on the march for i am marching to wherever i can go return and settle with your relatives and kindness and truth go with you but atai answered the king and said by the life of the ever-living and by the life of your majesty the king i will be at the place wherever your majesty the king is whether for life or death there will your servant be then david said to atai march and pass over so atai the gardener and all his men and all the children with them passed over and all the land wept with a loud voice when the force passed with the king over the brook kidron thus all the train passed in the direction of the desert there were also zadok and all the levites with him carrying the ark of the covenant of god but they set down the ark and helped abiathar until all the forces had passed out from the city the king however said to zadok take back the ark of god to the city if i find favor in the sight of the ever-living and he brings me back i shall see it and his dwelling but if he decides not to restore me to you let him do to me what is good in his sight the king also said to zadok the priest cheer up and return quietly to the city with achimatz your son and jonathan ben abiathar's two sons with you you see i shall be waiting at aboth in the pastures until the coming of news from you to inform me zadok and abiathar therefore returned the ark of god to jerusalem and went back there but david ascended the mount of zephim going up and weeping with his head covered he marched with his head covered and all the troops with him also veiled their heads and went ascending and weeping then it was reported to david that achitophel was in the conspiracy with absalom when david exclaimed lord frustrate the counsels of achitophel but when david came to the peak where they worship god hushai the archai came to meet him tearing his robes and with earth on his head david however said to him if you go along with me you will be a burden to me but if you return to the city and say to absalom i was a minister of the king your father and will be the same to you then you can be of service to me and can break the contrivances of achitophel for me will not zadok and abiathar the priests be assisting you so that all the talk you hear in the king's palace you can communicate to zadok and abiathar the priests they have also two lads achimatz with zadok and johanathan with abiathar and they will transmit by their hand to me everything that you may hear Hushai consequently went to watch for David in the city after Absalom came to Jerusalem. Chapter 16 When David passed a little beyond the hilltops, there came Ziba the steward of Mephibosheth to meet him with a troop of asses loaded, and upon them two hundred loaves of bread, a hundred cakes of raisins, a hundred bundles of vegetables, and a skin of wine. But the king asked Ziba, Whence have you come? when ziba answered the asses are for the family of the king to ride and the bread and raisins for your attendants to eat and the wine to drink if exhausted in the desert then the king asked where is your prince's son and ziba replied to the king he has gone back to jerusalem for he said the house of israel will now restore to me the kingship of my father the king consequently said to ziba attend all belonging to Mephibosheth I give to you. And Ziba replied, I bow to you, for I have found favor in the eyes of the king. From there David proceeded to Bakurim, and a man of the clan of the family of Saul came out from it, whose name was Shemai ben Gera, who advanced cursing and throwing stones at David and all of David's officers and at the people and the guards on the right and left of him. Shemai also shouted aloud thus, get off get off you man of blood you blackguard the ever-living has turned upon you all the blood of the family of saul whom you reign instead of and the ever-living has given the kingship to the hand of absalom your son look at your miseries for you are a man of blood abishai ben zeruiah consequently asked the king 
why should this dead dog bark at your majesty the king let me run over and cut off his head but the king replied what does it matter to me and you son of zeruiah what he cries or what the ever-living tells him to call david and what he says have i not done it then david said to abishai and all his servants you see the son who came out of my body seeks my life so since the son of my right hand assails me as for that fellow let him abuse for the ever-living tells him the lord sees me in my depression and the ever-living will return me blessings instead of the cursing of to-day so david and his men went on their way and shemai marched on the side of the hill near him walking and throwing stones and dirt at him in this way the king and all his people went wearily and depressed in mind but absalom and all the forces of the men of israel advanced to jerusalem and achitophel along with them then hushai the archai the friend of david came to absalom and hushai exclaimed to absalom long live the king long live the king but absalom asked hushai is this your love for your friend why have you not gone with your friend when hushai replied to absalom no for whoever the ever-living and the people choose and all the men of israel are with i shall stop with him and for the rest whom shall i be serving shall i not serve before his son as i served before your father for i shall be before you absalom then said to achitophel come on with you advise me what i should do and achitophel replied to absalom go to the slave wives of your father who are here to take care of the palace and all israel will hear that you have outraged your father and it will strengthen the hands of all who are with you absalom consequently erected a bed upon a veranda and absalom violated his father's wives in the sight of all israel for in those times the advice of achitophel when he advised was like inquiring from the word of god such were all the contrivances of achitophel both for david and for absalom chapter seventeen then achitophel said to absalom select at once twelve thousand men and i will start and pursue david to-night and come on him whilst he is weary and weak-handed when i shall terrify him and all the force with him will fly and i will kill the king alone then i shall turn all the people to you as all the men whom you have sought have turned the other people will be quiet all this advice was right in the opinion of absalom and the opinion of all the nobles of israel absalom however said let us now call hushai the archai for i would also hear what is his idea so they brought hushai to absalom when absalom said to him this is the advice of achitophel shall i act upon his advice if not what is your advice and hushai answered absalom the advice that achitophel has advised is not good for this reason then hushai continued you know your father and the men who are with him that they are soldiers and sore in mind like a bear robbed of her whelps in the field and your father is a man of war so will not lodge with the forces you see this he will hide in some cave or some tower and it may be we might miss him by accident and it will be heard of and said there has been a defeat of the people who are following absalom he is himself also a bold man whose heart is like the heart of a lion then the power of israel will melt for it knows that your father is a hero and how brave a man he is consequently i advise you to collect to yourself the army of israel from dan to beersheba like the sand that is by the sea for number and let them march before you in a mass and come upon him secretly at the place where he may be found and assail him like rain falling on the ground so that he cannot escape or any one of the men who are with him but if he is in a tower collect and carry all the army of israel to that tower with ropes and drag it into the river by which it is built and destroy it and absalom and all the princes of israel said the advice of hushai the archai is better than the advice of achitophel but the ever-living had suggested it to destroy the good advice of achitophel because the ever-living intended to bring punishment upon absalom hushai next informed zadok and abiathar the priests achitophel has advised absalom and the nobles of israel in this way but i have advised him in that so now be quick and inform david saying do not stay to-night at the fort of the desert but pass over it for fear the king should be destroyed and all his forces with him 
Now Jonathan and Akimatz were posted at Ain Rogel, and a girl was sent to inform them, and they went to inform King David so that none might be able to see them leaving the city. A young man, however, saw them and reported to Absalom. The two, however, ran quickly and came to the house of a man in Bakurim, who had a well in his courtyard, and they went down it. Then the man took and closed the lid over the top of the well, and spread thrashing corn over it, so that it was not seen. So when the officers of Absalom came to the man's house and asked, Where are Jonathan and Akimatz? The man replied to them, They have passed the brook of water. They therefore sought for them, but not finding, they returned to Jerusalem. But after they had gone, then those came up from the well and proceeded and informed David, and said to David, Start! and pass quickly over the water, for Achitophel has advised thus against you. Consequently David and all the people with him arose, and were crossing the Jordan until daybreak, until there were none left to pass the Jordan. But when Achitophel saw that his advice was not being acted upon, he saddled his ass and started, and went to his own home at his village, and arranged his affairs, then hung himself and died, and they buried him in the tomb of his father. Meantime David went to Machanaim, so Absalom crossed the Jordan, and all the army of Israel with him. But Absalom had appointed Amasa to command the army instead of Joab. Amasa was the son of a man named Ithra, a Jezreelite, who married Abigail, the daughter of Nakash, sister of Zeruiah, the mother of Joab. Thus Israel and Absalom encamped in the land of Gilad. When David arrived at Machanaim, Shobai, the son of Nakash, from Rabath of the Benai Ammon, and Makir ban Amiel of Lodabar, and Barzillai, the Giladite of Rogalim, came with beds and blankets and furniture, cups and wheat and barley and flour, and oats and beans and lentils and fuel, with honey and butter and sheep and cow's cheese for food, and advanced to meet David and the forces with him, for they said, The people are hungry and exhausted. Chapter 18 So they met in the pastures, where David and the force with him had halted, and he appointed colonels of regiments and captains of companies over them. Afterward David arranged the forces, one-third under Joab, and one-third under Abishai, and one-third under Atai the gardener. And the king then said to the forces, I also will march with you. But the army said, You shall not go, for if we are defeated, they will not set their heart upon us, and if they kill half of us, they will not set their heart upon us, for you are worth ten thousand of us, so it is better you should help by directing us from the city. The king consequently replied, Whatever is good in your opinion, I will do. Therefore the king stood at the side of the gate, and all the force went out by companies and regiments. But the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Atai, saying, Spare the lad Absalom for me. And all the army heard the king's orders about Absalom to all the officers. Thus the force went into the field to meet Israel, and the battle occurred in the forest of Ephraim, where the army of Israel was routed before the generals of David. And in the great rout of that day twenty thousand perished, for the battle was spread over all the district, and more of the people were destroyed in the forest than what the sword destroyed at the moment. Absalom also fled before the officers of David. Absalom was mounted upon a mule, and the mule ran under the boughs of a great oak tree, and his head was caught in the oak, so that he hung between the sky and the earth. But the mule that was under him passed on. One of the men of David, however, saw him, and informed Joab, and said, I have seen Absalom hanging in an oak tree, when Joab said to the man, Show him to me, and where you have seen him. But why did you not strike him to the earth? For then I would have given you ten silvers and a girdle. But the man replied to Joab, Even if you jingled a thousand silvers on my hand, I would not assail the son of the king. For in our hearing the king commanded to you and Abishai and Atai, saying, Spare for me the lad Absalom. If I had done, I should have been false to my life. For no event is hidden from the king, and you would have set yourself against me. Joab, however, replied, I can't dawdle in this way with you, and took the three darts in his hand, and thrust them into the heart of Absalom, whilst he yet lived in the middle of the oak. Then two of Joab's guards surrounded him, and stabbed Absalom, and killed him. 
Joab afterwards sounded the trumpet, and the forces returned from pursuing Israel, for Joab restrained the men. But they took Absalom and flung him down in the forest into a great pit, and piled over him a very great heap of stones. Thus all Israel fled each to his home. Absalom, however, in his lifetime had erected the column which is in the king's plain, for he said, I have no son to continue the memory of my name. So he named the column by his own name, and it is called The Finger of Absalom to this day. Then Achimatz ben Zadok said, I will run and announce to the king that the ever-living has done him justice against the hand of his enemies. But Joab replied to him, No man shall announce this event today. You shall, however, announce it tomorrow, but today you shall not announce it, because the son of the king has been killed. Joab, however, afterwards said to Cusai, Go, inform the king what you have seen. And Cusai turned from Joab and ran. Yet Achimatz ben Zadok continued to importune and said to Joab, May I not now also myself run after Cusai? And Joab replied, What good for you to run, my boy? There is no runner in the country better than him. But yet I wish to run. Then he said to him, Run. So he ran, and Achimatz ran by the road of the pastures and passed beyond Cusai. David was at this time sitting between the two gates, and a watchman was posted on the roof of the gateway, on the ramparts, who raised his eyes and saw a man running alone. The sentinel accordingly called and informed the king, and the king asked, If alone, is it towards the wall that he comes and approaches? Then the sentinel saw another man running, so he cried from the gate and said, I see a man running after, when the king replied, he also is a messenger of good news. Then the sentinel said, I recognize the running of the first runner as the running of uh, Achimatz ben Zadok. And the king answered, He is a good man, and he will bring good news. Then Achimatz called out and said to the king, Peace! And bowed to the king with his face to the earth and said, Thank your ever-living God, who has delivered the men who rose against you to the hand of your majesty the king. When the king asked, Is the lad Absalom safe? And Achimatz replied, I saw a great crowd about the king's general Joab and your officers, but I knew not why. The king therefore said, Turn and station yourself there. So he turned and stood. Then Cusai came, and Cusai said, there is good news for your majesty the king for the ever-living has granted you justice today from the hands of your enemies all who rose against you but the king asked of kusai is the lad absalom safe when kusai answered may all the enemies of your majesty the king be like that young man and all who rise against you for evil the end of chapters thirteen through eighteen of the second book of samuel Recording by Mark Penfold